Hi everyone, my name is Lucy and this is Memory Keeper Journals. Today I wanted to take you and show you how I do a journal color. I am creating a T, uh, TN notebook for myself, which is a travel journal. And I decided to use Angela Kerr's digital, which it's called a vintage notebook. And like I said, it's a TN style, which is what I like to use to write because I can take it anywhere and I can write whatever I want in it. And it's easy. It's not like a junk journal. You can make it like a junk journal, but I'd rather not do it as a junk journal for myself. I want a lot of pages for me to write on. So let me show you the digital. It's beautiful. And I believe I have this page right here and I wanted to show you what it looks like because the difference of paper let me show you this paper is 24 pounds I bought this paper at Walmart and I usually get this one it's pretty thick um, and I use it to do my coffee dye papers or to print any of the digitals that I have been putting in my journals but I then bought a printed version once from Angela from Miss Angela Kerr if you haven't seen her channel you need to go in and, and subscribe and check all of her videos she has it so perfectly in order I love it and she shows you so many different ways to do to use an envelope but um or a uh, not like a regular envelope but even those junk envelopes that we throw away I mean, she shows you every single time how to make a different pocket. Anyway, I love it. So just go check it out. But this this one that I have purchased from her, I got it in the mail, printed already. And I love the paper so much. It was so thick and very smooth and beautiful. Plus, the colors look amazing. So if you really look at it backwards... You see the difference between this one and this one? It's completely, it's muted. I don't know if you can tell from the camera, but it is muted. And look at the colors on this one. It just looks so much better, I love it. Plus, I love the way that it feels. I could see myself writing on this, for sure, with any pen, right? So I decided I wanted to show you guys what it looks like anyways. Like I said, this this one I bought for myself. I'm making myself a um, writing journal. And I just wanted to show you what it looks like. These are extras, and I usually print them like this, only one-sided. Because I could use these for tags, pockets, belly bands, it doesn't matter, or a background for collage or anything. Okay, so this one back here, this one has to do with my porch prints. I'm pretty sure you know about her her channel and her quality and her digitals. They're gorgeous. I know. I've been buying hers too. This one I bought a long time ago, so I can't remember exactly what the name of it is. But when I do, I will bring. I will write it down and put it in the description box. These are coffee dye paper. She has the plain ones, which are simple like this. But they come in different shades, which is the ones that I am using in this journal. They have different kinds, like that. A little bit darker. Or like this. See, they're all different. They have a different style. They're really nice. But those are the regular ones. And then she has them with prints on them. And some of these prints are different types of um, fonts, which are really beautiful too. I only printed this one because this is the one that I want with the calligraphy style for what I'm going to do. And then she also has another one that has stamping. It looks like a collage of like mail and, and stamping and letters and everything. And it's really nice and you can also use it to uh, as one of the pages or for backgrounds or collages anything that you want so I use it a lot when I don't have my own um, vintage or uh, antique papers 
which is what I used. I like to use those to do collages and things like that. So if you don't have that, you can always do it on a digital. So just thought that you might want to know. Anyways, to what we are going to do today is the cover for this journal. So right now, the TN size, I'm going to show you what it is. After I cut it, it's eight and a half by eight and a quarter. Okay, so that's the size of the TN. Now I'm going to figure out what size of um, journal cover I want. And it's just probably going to be a quarter out on both sides. So that's what I'm going to do. So if it's eight and a half, I'll probably add another quarter. And then if it's eight and a quarter, I add another uh, quarter onto that. Okay. So let me get the base. Okay. The first thing we're going to be using is craft paper. I'm going to use this for the base. Okay. You can use the cardstock. Um, you can use a file folder. Um, you can use a hanging folder as well. I've used all of my um, file folders, so I'm going to use my cardstock, which is, this is a craft paper. Okay. Next, I am going to use something for a cover, but I want to put it to become soft and a little bit more cushiony. So I'm going to use some batting for it. And I just took a piece just to, I don't have it sized yet. It's not size. I'm just taking out all of the uh, items that I want to use. So I have batting and I have a cardstock. I also have some muslin. I could use the muslin instead and then maybe cover it with another fabric. It'll be a lot to put, but I'm only going to use three items. There's only this right now. So far, this is what I'm going to use. I'm just giving you an idea of what you can use. Okay. Um, I have some kind of a material here. This one, I believe I, I got it from somebody. I'm not sure if it was Gina, but this thing is coming off. Or if it was um, Flushy May. I can't remember. I honestly cannot remember. I've had it for a while now. And usually when I have things for a long time, I cannot remember where I get it from. I'm sorry about that. And then I also have this one, which I love. And I think that it might be the back or the inside. I don't know. I'm still trying to debate on it. So this can be used for many things. I could use it for the inside. I could use it for decorating. I could take it apart and make little pieces with this. I could do that. But I'm debating on my cover being this one, just the green, or this one. But then it all depends on how we're going to decorate the front as well. So I have to think about that first before I start setting it up. So I was thinking, she's, I did all the fussy cutting of all of the, um, the from the digital. This is the, um, what do you call that? Your die cuts. Okay, so I have all of these pictures in here and some cards. And I went through them, and so far, I liked it that one, or where's the other girl? Oh, this one, right here. So it's one of these two to be in the cover. They're pretty m close to my hair, curly, and dark skin, because I am brown, and so I like that. And then I cut, and then I have these little sample collection that Gina sent to me. I got it from her, so I know I can use something for the background. And so I was thinking, putting the picture, if I can open this thing, where is it? On this side. If I can open it over here okay so 
So we have a button and then we have all of these cute little pieces that we can use in the cover, right? If I use this one, I can use so much more than just that. But I mean, there's the whites. We got some prints. These are so cute and the lace. But I'm not gonna use lace and an applique. This is blue. I saw all the blues and pinks. You know, I think I could use the blues in this journal because this journal is all blue and pink. So that'll be perfect to add on here. There's a little hint of purple too. I love this one. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to separate everything. I'm going to figure out what my front is going to look and I'm going to come right back so that I can show you what I came up with. So I won't keep you here. Okay, so this is more or less what I was thinking about. But I haven't have, I don't have my heart set up on it yet. It's just more or less what I was thinking that I would do. This I do want to do on the spine of the book so I think that I'm definitely going to do okay so I'm going to put this aside and we're going to start with the book okay so first what we're going to do is we're going to cut this cardstock a little bit a quarter bigger than the size the original size is eight and a half in length so I'm going to do it at eight and three quarters long okay and we save this and then we're gonna do the other side is so the long side will be eight and three quarters and then the top will stay the same because it's the same size right yeah it's about oh it is eight and a half it's the same size maybe i cut it the wrong way let me get another one this is the same size this way. Yeah. The length. So this way is how. Okay, so we're going to cut it in landscape this way. So if this is eight and a half, that's where we want it at eight and three quarters on this length because we still have some space for the top and bottom. And that's how I think. Eight and three quarters. That's eight and a half. Eight and three quarters. So we'll do that instead. Okay? And this is supposed to be this way. There. And that way it has uh, at least a quarter in each in every side okay so that's how we're going to do it okay next we're going to do the batting on this and first maybe we need to fold it so i'm going to go ahead and fold it this way that way it already has the fold of the journal And there we go. And it's perfect. Okay. Now we have the cover. Now we're going to use glue stick. We're going to put all over the cover. And 
And this is just so that I can put the batting on it and it doesn't move when I'm sewing on it. Okay. And if you don't want to do fabric or anything like that, you don't have to. You could just cover it up with whatever paper you like. If you have a um, paper pad, you can use the paper pad as well. But for me, I want to use the batting because I want it to be more of a cushioned or so. So I put the batting down first and then I turn this around just so I don't waste too much of it. Put it pretty close to the edge. And then I will use my rotary cutter to cut it to the edge of the cardstock. So let me show you. Yeah, let's do this side first. I gotta bring it down a little bit because I need to get to it. Then we cut this side. Just to the edge of the paper of the cardstock to clean it off. And the last side. Oh, I didn't cut the whole thing. Oh, I probably took some of the paper by mistake. I didn't mean to do that. So I'll throw these little raggly ones off. And these are safe for something else. Okay. Now that we have this, now I can think of what I want to put as the base, which is this one. And I think this is the side of it. And this is what we have right here. Okay, and that's what I want to put on there. Now the next thing I need to think about is if I want this bulk here or because if I do that the inside is going to have some kind of a square right in the middle and I don't want it to be too bulky as well so we're going to think on that for a moment so I'm thinking that I probably am going to cut it to the edge. So for it to be cleaner, I'm going to go ahead and cut it this way. Not take too much because I could use that little bit of green on something else. So I try to solve it just as much as I can on the fabric. Nicely clean. This side off and these strips we can use for something else I want to get really close to the edge so I don't cut the paper this one is a pretty good piece that we can use even for a belly band or a pocket maybe several pockets I will put those aside or we can even do a um, scrap uh, fabric swatch. Okay. Now that it is in the same size, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of fabric tuck. So again, so that it stays put. But only in a little bit here and there. So I'll just do like this, wherever there is um, too much, I'll just go over it with my fingers because I don't want it to go through. Even though this fabric is pretty thick, I still don't want it to go through. 
okay then we'll do this side and it's just to hold it down while I put it in my machine okay Now I'm going to sew it around with a colors, I think I bought it, I'm probably going to use the cream color. So this color, I could use brown too if I wanted to, it would look really cute just to have like a little accent on the outside. But because I want to add lace or something here, I don't think it would be a good idea to add um the brown but we'll see I'm gonna set up my machine and I can start sewing I do like the idea of this because I love pockets so like this would be really cute in the front like that and just push it inside so that I can cover it inside with something else have it a little bit hanging from the bottom and do a little pocket that's my usual my usual way of covering a book and then it's very obvious and i can always do pockets on the inside or i can do it this way right and that is what it would look like but at the same time i really love the way this looked as soon as I put it on what do you guys think doesn't it look really pretty as soon as you see it as it's so pretty and so delicate I love it and I think that would be perfect for this we're gonna grab some of the paper that I originally got out that I wanted to use and that one would be really nice to use there because it's about writing these are all so beautiful so it's kind of hard to pick that's gorgeous That's gorgeous. It's very light and soft. I like that one. And this one. It has some of the blue. Also. So. I am between this one and this one. I think this one is it. It's got a lot more color. And since it's a solid color out here, I want to have some more color inside. And this will be the front. So it'll look really good with it. It has pretty much the same colors throughout and I like that I like that this one because of the border it's so pretty so it was perfect for the front page I love that with the stamp and the writing that's perfect so that's what I'm gonna do so now I'm gonna cut it to size and take the edges off and then I'm gonna cut it in half because I don't want to just do it that way and fold it and it's easier because when you fold it it's not a mess so i can do like a little piece of that muslin that i showed before which is this one so we can cut a strip of the muslin to put right in the middle so i'll go ahead and do that now so that i'm ready so I'm thinking that what I want 
it's about an inch and a half so if I measure it here on my table it should be around here and this is the strip that I would like in the middle and I don't want it to be on the bottom I want it to be on top of the paper so I'm gonna fold this paper in half okay it's ready and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the edges first where's my knife here it is I'm gonna cut the edges first Every time you use your knife, if you want to use a knife, for those of you who doesn't, who don't use the knife, um, put it against the ruler so it doesn't move and keep it there. And do it again and keep it there while you're holding it down. And don't do it so hard because then it'll break and it'll mess up the paper. Okay. It's usually easy when you do one or two pages. When you do a whole bunch together, it's harder. It's just going to break the page unless the knife is really, really um, sharp or brand new. That's the best way. Okay. I'm going to turn it around because I can see the line on the white. And I'm going to cut it right on that middle. Okay. Now, this is the front, this is the back, but I can turn it around and put this as the front, no, because it's backwards. <laughs> it does look backwards, so it's going to have to be this way. Okay, now I'm going to measure that, but the way I do that is, of course, I got to take this white part off first, because then that's the side that I need it on. Okay, and then I'm going to come here. I want the bottom. It looks like it would fit. Oh, it looks like it won't fit. It's not big enough to cover the cover. Okay, I have a solution. Maybe we do have to cover this with... um. The Muslim. Or do I care? I don't think I really care. The only thing I care about is that it's in the middle. That I can cut it here. See? So I am going to go ahead and cut to... Okay, so the middle is right here. And let me show you with a pencil. This is the middle right here so I'm gonna cut it just a bit from here just a little bit less oh my finger again my fingers are always messed up my nails oh they hurt I'm sorry about that guys but I'm gonna go ahead you see where I did the pencil line I put it on the line here so that it's straight on the top line and on the line where it falls and then from there i can cut it straight and make sure that it's straight and then with the ruler i can go ahead and cut and here we have another strip and now this will go here like that and it would be the same for this side so i'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands and i'll be right back and i'll cut this one okay so i wanted to take you on this because i need to share it <laughs> if you ever need a band-aid and you don't have one take a piece of napkin cut it into a piece grab some of amity bloom's tape okay 
and create your own band-aid and so I'm gonna create my own band-aid guys that is what I'm doing guys oh, I think I took too much but you get the, the idea of what I'm trying to tell you I have a band-aid I made a makeshift band-aid that I made and it's pretty it's got flowers Amity Blooms flowers <laughs> uh, okay I have a band-aid guys you don't have to see my finger bleeding anymore and now I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one too in the same way but I am going to go ahead and make the line right there put it flush to this line so that it's straight and then make sure that this line is with my grid so that it can be a uh, straight line and it's not all jagged and then I cut and I can use this strip as well so now we have it I got all those little things from the material like the little thingies are coming off what are those sequins yeah that's it put the knife up here okay now I have both so now I can go ahead and do this of course I have to erase that line I wrote there because I don't want to see it so I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down but first I'm gonna um, I'm going to um, what do you call that I want to distress it and I have this pink one that a friend of mine gave to me and I want to use it so let's see oh that's cute just to give it a nice border it's so pretty this goes this way. Let's do this one. I like it. Perfect. All right, that's done. And then I'm not going to glue it yet because, because, because I'm thinking that I want like a cute little pocket here and let's see what else can I use can I use this one no it's too small a cute little pocket here in the back oh, we could probably use the blue one there I love that we can use the pink and the blue. How about that? Right? Well, I think I like the blue one here. There. That's it. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these cute little pockets. Sorry, guys. My nose. I'm still dealing with allergies. Also, I took some allergy medication so that I wouldn't be sniffling so much as I am recording. So I don't need you guys to be listening to that. I'm sure you don't want to listen to that either. So we'll do that. Thank you. And I'm going to sew around it so it won't come off. I'm going to do the same thing and I'm probably just going to do a regular... Um, maybe a single stitch so that's why I'm not putting so much just very lightly
this way it doesn't move what's the front this is the front it doesn't move as I am sewing and it helps a lot okay so now I got two simple pockets and it's fine I don't need a lot I think that would work and then what I'm gonna do is the strip let's see what it looks like if I put it on top it doesn't look bad if I do it on top what do you guys think it's not gonna we're not gonna see it very much just the little edges I could use lace if that but I don't think I have lace this size let me look I'll be right back it's gonna have to be because I don't have any other that size so that's fine I don't it doesn't bother me that's gonna be on the inside so that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna go ahead and sew these two first and then I'll add this and glue it and then I'll come back and I'll show you what I did all right okay so now that I already glued the two sides I wanted you to see me putting just the middle section and the reason why I want to do that and by the way I use fabric tuck but the reason why I wanted you to see this is because I just wanted to make sure that you knew the reason why I was doing this this portion here is for um, to, to make sure that we can stabilize the spine and it doesn't break as I'm opening and closing this journal every day all the time so you can use tape you can use anything else but because i am going to sew my signatures in i just wanted to glue this on here i can also sew the signature onto this fabric and then glue it here i can do that as well and it would probably be easy to do the only thing is um to sew it is not easy for you so i want to make sure that you guys can see an easy way of doing it okay so this is the same size as this so you need to have a cardstock that is the same size as the cover okay so that when you are going to sew the one signature just the one signature is way easy to do it this way this cardstock you're gonna fold it in half and this is the way that I do it for one signature for more than one signature is different I have a whole you know where it goes and the size and all that just so that it is perfect but it's also the same size as my book okay so this is what I do. It's just because it's cardstock makes it a little bit harder to do. But what I need to do is burnish it with my bone folder and it'll make it easier for me. There. It's right in the middle. Like that. And to do the three punch hole, which is all I'm going to do, fold it in half, and then I fold it in half again, and then you have the three right in the middle. And you just, if you can't see it, you can just grab a pencil or a pen, whatever you have, and you can just mark it where you're going to do the holes. For me, I just do the holes prior to, so it's easier. I grab my glue book that I have and for just one signature I don't really do this I just eyeball it because I've been doing it for so long it's easy for me to do but I just want to show you for my followers and my new subscribers thank you so much for following me I appreciate that because I just noticed that I have gotten so many subscribers lately and I think it was because of my video for the um, the glass um, bottles that I decoupaged with napkins 
that was a job that was fun though i loved it it was a lot of work it took all day and then the next day to finish it but i loved it i enjoyed every moment of it because um i wanted that for myself okay so i'm gonna put the word up here that way i know and that usually I do because when you do more than one signature, you just want to make sure that the signatures are evenly um, put into the journal, okay? So just so you know, I just want to make sure you guys understand that portion, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to keep that. I don't need the bone folder right now. I put everything to the side. I have a little... Um, rolling cart mostly all of my stuff are in that rolling cart so they're off my desk and they're not in my way so I'm gonna put this in the middle would you see how this is a lot bigger than the signatures because the signatures are a little bit smaller than the cover itself the cover is way bigger see that it's the same size as the cover. So you have to make sure you got the same amount of space between both the top and the bottom so that it's right in the middle. Okay. First, we're going to glue this section first. And I'm going to use Fabric Tech for that. And whatever I put on here, I just uh, spread it with my finger because I don't have a spreader yet. I already have one in my cart that I might get eventually, but um, not yet. Soon. But it has all the glue here on the side. And it's enough and it's not too much. And I'm going to go ahead and put it right in the middle. So whatever I can see, it's in the middle. I'm sure you guys can see. And I'll just check it to make sure there's glue there. It's all stuck to my finger now. Yep, all done. It's fixed and glued. Now, I can go ahead and make sure this stays put like this. This is the front. This will be the front, where it's a good thing I didn't do that yet. And this goes up. So I'm gonna put, make sure that this is in the same as my inside covers. You see these? Because it's the same size as the notebook, uh, obviously, because it's part of the digital. That's probably why it didn't fit on my cover. It's bigger and I should have used the whole page, even if it had the white, because I could have distressed it in pink, you know? Sometimes when you have those white edges because your printer doesn't print full page mine doesn't for some reason i don't know why i've tried everything but you can go ahead and take the distress and just distress all the edges and it's fine for the same color of whatever the image is on your digital and it will be just fine and you can use a whole page you don't have to waste that little edge of the digital that's just a little tip of mine so I usually start in the middle and what I do is I make sure that I um, squish it all the way in, but I bend it. I don't, I am not going to open the book. I usually bend it like this, okay? So while that's in there, I'm gonna go ahead and do my needle because I should have done the needle first, but I wasn't thinking. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the needle. Okay, and for it to stay, I'm going to grab my big binder clip and just have it here holding the journal for me for a minute while I do this. 
And this is wax thread. I love using this stuff because I use it on my leather all the time. And I do three because I like them long so that I can have uh, beads in the end. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just cut it because I don't care for the beads. But I do want beads this time around because I got some cute ones that are really shiny and sparkly and I really want to use them. So I am going to leave some string. Okay, so now that I did that, I'll go ahead and take it off and put it right in the middle. And then we go through here, not from the inside, from the outside. And then you go back to the bottom and then back to the middle. And just try not to puncture it, but if you do, you will know. Put one on one side, one on the other, and then I'm gonna even it out. I'll take the needle off. And now I'm gonna even it out. So I pull it, and then I pull these two together because I want them even and pull it. If it's not working, I'll go ahead and do it again and pull it again until you can get it all. See, it's pretty much even. And then you look to make sure it's already in there and it is. It's just a little fusses from the thing from the batter, batting material. It came up through the hole. Let me just pull it out. Okay, it, everything gets stuck to my finger because I still have glue, so I get all the strings stuck. Okay, once it's all there, and you know it's tight, and it's not coming out, then you can knot it. And I do two just to make sure it doesn't come off. And these are my strings. And there you have it. I have a journal ready. And this is a single journal with all of my beautiful pages from the digital. Isn't that pretty? Oh my goodness, I love it. Oh, that came out so pretty right there. Oh, I'm glad I didn't use it in the cover because I could write all over it. So pretty. I love it, love it, love it. And now I can do whatever I want on the outside, whether I want to use this one, which I believe goes this way. I had it wrong the last time. And I think it looks so cute. And I love it. So I'm thinking I'm gonna have to glue just there and in here so it can be a pocket. I'm not sure I'm gonna do that, but I think I'm going to. And then I can put some bookends and, and it's done and some beads. So I will stop the video now because I'm pretty sure it's more than an hour. And I will come back in the next video to show you how I decorate it and get it ready for me to use and put in my leather journal. And um, I hope that you really like this video, especially all of you, all of my subscribers. And welcome to my new subscribers. I, I'm so happy that you're here. I have been wanting to make more videos and I am thinking of creating a... Um, a series of videos that has to do with creating and um, trying new things and so I want to see uh, how that works out I know I have to film them prior to putting them in my channel but for now we're gonna be doing these craft with me um, oh, once in a while so that you guys can have something to do while I am creating some journals for my shop all right um, but this is it for now and I hope to see you in the next video guys bye now let me know what you think about this and if you did try it okay 
and I'll see you on the next one. Bye guys.